Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Friday Ramblings. We are back with another journey through wrestling championships. Quick little breakdown history to give you all a bit of more appreciation of how titles are won, lost, and how deep the history can go. Now, this is technically part two of our previous video as the United States Championship being one of the few championships to have jumped promotions and been actively used is when we divide it up into two parts. So, to give you a quick recap, we ended last week, or last episode. Last week we did a different topic altogether. We ended our previous run of the WCW era of the United States Championship, which was also the NWA Crockett Promotions era. But if you had watched that video, you would know that already. I'll even give you all a chance to go back and watch it right now, if you didn't before. Okay, welcome back. Fun times. So, we left off with Booker T as the final WCW champion as of the final WCW bit of programming aired, which was, yes, folks, Monday Nitro. So, we are going to start with the WWF Invasion. I know technically the belt was still referred to as the WW, or WCW United States Championship at this point, but because this was officially the era where the title was under control by WWF, I am considering these last couple champions part of the WWF era. So we're going to run down them real quick, and then we're going to jump back to our general quick history talk and then go forward with our list of champions once they started calling the belt the official WWF United States Championship, well, WWE, because they had already done the name change by then, WWE United States Championship. So on July 24th, 2001, on an episode of SmackDown, Chris Canyon becomes the United States Champion as the belt was given to him by Booker T, who was also holding the WCW Championship at the time. 46 days later, the title was won by Tajiri on an episode of Raw, who only held it for 13 days before at the Unforgiven pay-per-view, Rhino won it. 29 days later, however, Kurt Angle would win it on the October 22nd Raw from Kansas City, Missouri, holding it for three weeks before Edge won it on the November 12th, 2001 episode of Raw, holding it for six days before at the Survivor Series 2001 pay-per-view that brought about the end of the WCW Invasion Angle, which, yes, also involved ECW, um, when the title was unified with the Intercontinental Championship, which was held by Test at the time, Edge won the match, becoming the Intercontinental Champion, while the United States title was deactivated. At this time, they were still WWF. In 2002, WWF was renamed WWE. And that's a bit of a story itself, kind of more for our legal shenanigans type stuff that we've so far only done with video games, but I may get into the whole history of the name change thing at another time. Still, it was from November of 2001 until July of 2003 before the United States Championship was reactivated, this time being officially the WWE United States Championship. This was done because post-invasion there was a the first WWE brand split where Raw and SmackDown were run as competing brands in the Intercontinental Championship ended up on Raw. So, SmackDown needed its own secondary men's t championship, and the decision was made to bring back the U U.S. championship. This is significant because 
while all of the WCW titles were retired at the Invasion pay-per-view, the United States Championship was the only one that was reactivated. Uh, half no credit to the Cruiserweight Championship because the name was kept, although WWE generally considers it to be the start of a new lineage. Uh, they had retired the Light Heavyweight Championship at the pay-per-view uh, instead due to the fact that well, frankly put, the Cruiserweight Championship had generally been considered the bigger, better championship out of the two. It was one of the few things WCW did properly uh, up even up until the tail end of it was have a very competitive Cruiserweight division. So let's break down into the WWE era history. On July 27, 2003, at the Vengeance pay-per-view from Denver, Colorado, Eddie Guerrero defeats Chris Benoit in a tournament final and would hold it for 84 days before losing it to Big Show at No Mercy. Big Show would hold it for 147 days before losing it to John Cena at WrestleMania 20, which is, yes folks, John Cena's first WrestleMania as an active competitor, he had previously appeared uh, cutting a promo at 19 due to being injured at the time. And also the first time he had won a championship at WrestleMania. Actually, I, think, I believe it was his first championship won on the main roster altogether. So, there you go. Important historical footnote. John Cena's first WrestleMania match was a United States Championship match. Of course, Big Show himself was a WCW veteran, having competed there as the Giant, so good times. Unfortunately, after 114 days, John Cena was stripped of the championship for attacking SmackDown in storyline authority figure General Manager Kurt Angle. Shortly thereafter, on July 27th, Booker T would win the championship in an eight-way elimination match, also involving John Cena, Rene Dupree, Kenzo Suzuki, Rob Van Dam, Billy Gunn, Charlie Haas, and Luther Reigns. This is, of course, Booker T's first reign under the WWE era, but he had been a previous WCW era United States champion, so good for him. 68 days later, however, John Cena would win it back at the No Mercy pay-per-view in the fifth match of a best-of-five series. Unfortunately, two days later at SmackDown, or excuse me, well, four days later at SmackDown, Newing, newly debuted Carlito Caribbean Cool, who had been previously introduced in a series of vignettes, won the championship at SmackDown in Boston, Massachusetts, for those of you who like to keep track of your cities. 42 days later, John Cena would win it back yet again for his third run with the belt. November 16th, 2004 on an episode of SmackDown, holding it for 105 days before Orlando Jordan won it on March 1st at a SmackDown taping in Albany, New York, holding it for 173 days. Um, this was part of a greater angle. Uh, Orlando Jordan was the running buddy of champion John Bradshaw Layfield, aka JBL, who Cena was going to compete against a in a couple weeks at WrestleMania 21, which he would subsequently win, but long story short, JBL had cost John Cena the title also to undermine and try to get in John Cena's head before the WrestleMania match. Thus, Orlando Jordan picked it up. 
Still, at SummerSlam on October 21st, Chris Benoit would win the championship. Holding it for 58 days before losing it to Booker T on an episode of SmackDown. However, 35 days later, the title is vacated when Booker T's title defense against Chris Benoit ended in a double pinfall. Oh no! On January 10th, 2006, Booker T won the title after facing Chris Benoit in a best of seven series. He had actually won the first three matches before Randy Orton substituted for Booker T after that due to injury. Randy Orton lose the next three matches. But the final match would be won by Booker giving him the championship. At least for 40 days, Chris Benoit wins it back on February 19th at the No Way Out pay-per-view. And then, remember a little bit ago when we mentioned JBL get, making sure his buddy Orlando Jordan won the title? Well, a year later, things had changed for JBL. He had not only lost the championship to John Cena, but had not managed to regain it and hold on to it. So at WrestleMania 22, JBL wins the title from Chris Benoit. Official date is April 2nd. Holding it for 51 days for losing it to hot rookie Bobby Lashley. On a SmackDown taping. 49 days later, he would lose it to Fit Finley on an episode of SmackDown. This bringing us to July 2006. And coming up on, hey, three years of title act being active and... We've already had a good chunk of championship changes. It's a very active title. Very competitive title. Still 49 days later, Mr. Kennedy! Kennedy! Would win the championship in a triple threat match also involving Bobby Lashley, who is the one Kennedy had pinned. 42 days later, he would lose it to Chris Benoit on October 10th on an episode of SmackDown from Jacksonville, Florida. Good town. Been there many a time. Who would go on to hold the belt for an impressive 222 days until finally losing it to MVP? who won it at the Judgment Day pay-per-view on May 20th, 2007 in a two out of three falls match. MVP would hold it for an even more impressive 343 days. That's right, almost a year before losing it to Matt Hardy on April 27th at the Backlash pay-per-view However, because Matt Hardy was currently a member of ECW, the title became exclusive to the ECW brand. But only for 84 days before Shelton Benjamin would win it at the Great American Bash, returning it to SmackDown, as that was the roster Shelton Benjamin was a member of at the time. Shelton Benjamin would go on to a respectable 240-day reign, for losing it on March 17th, 2009, good old St. Patrick's Day, to MVP at a SmackDown taping, making the title exclusive to the Raw brand. Yay, more brand swapping. On June 1st, 2009, Kofi Kingston would win it at a Raw taping, holding it for 126 days before The Miz won it on October 5th at Raw, holding it for 224 days before losing it to Bret Hart in a no disqualification, no countout match. Bret Hart would hold it for a week before vacating it upon becoming the Raw general manager. 
course, Bret Hart had previously been a champion in WCW, so, you know, he's won both versions of the championship. The title would be won later that same night, which, for the record, yes, folks, is May 24th, 2010, by our truth defeating The Miz in that match. Our truth would hold it for only 21 days before losing it to The Miz on an episode of Raw in a fatal four way match, also involving John Morrison and Zack Ryder. 97 days later, Daniel Bryan would win the championship at the appropriately named Night of Champions pay per view. This brings us to September 19th, 2010. He would hold it for a impressive 176 days before losing it on March 14th, 2011 to Sheamus on an episode of Raw with the stipulation that Sheamus lost, he would have quit the WWE. Shortly thereafter, Sheamus is drafted to SmackDown and the US Championship returns to SmackDown. Kofi Kingston wins it on May 1st Stopping Sheamus' reign at 48 days in a tables match at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view, he would have a 49-day reign before he would lose it to Dolph Ziggler at Capital Punishment, who would hold it for 182 days. This brings us to December 18th, 2011, when Zack Ryder would win it at the TLC pay-per-view, holding it for a month before Jack Swagger wins it at Raw. For 49 days, Santino Morello wins it on Raw, holding it for 167 days for Cesaro, won it on the SummerSlam pre-show on August 19th, holding it for a lovely 240 days before Kofi Kingston would pick up another reign on April 15th, 2013 on an episode of Raw. Dean Ambrose would then win it at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view as part of the Shield's early dominance run. Dean Ambrose would be a dominant champion, holding it for 351 days before losing it to Sheamus on May 5th, 2014 as part of a 20-man battle royale. Dean Ambrose, with all respects and credibility to him as champion, was the last person eliminated in the match. Sheamus would himself lose it 182 days later to Rusev on an episode of Raw, who held it for 146 days before losing it at WrestleMania 31 to John Cena. This took place on March 29, 2015 in Santa Clara, California. 147 days later, John lost it to Seth Rollins, who would hold it for a month before losing it back to John Cena at Night of Champions. 35 days later, Alberto Del Rio would win it back at Hel or win it from John Cena at Hell in a Cell, notching off a 78-day reign before losing it to Kalisto on an episode of Raw. However, three days later, Alberto Del Rio would win it back on Smack on an episode of SmackDown, holding it for 12 days before losing it back to Kalisto at the Royal Rumble who would manage to hold it for 119 days before at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view Rusev would win the title for the second time at this point the brand extension returns and the title becomes exclusive to the Raw brand when Rusev is drafted after a 126 day reign at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view Roman Reigns would become United States Champion, notching 106 days before losing it to Chris Jericho on Raw. This point is now January of 2017. This was a two-on-one handicap match also involving Kevin Owens, who had teamed with Jericho. Jericho pins Roman Reigns to win the title. Good times. However, 83 days later, at WrestleMania 33, Kevin Owens would win the title from Chris Jericho, bringing title to the SmackDown brand. But 
a month later, Chris Jericho would win it at Payback. But only a couple days later on SmackDown, Kevin Owens would win it for his second reign, holding it for 66 days before the phenomenal AJ Styles wins it at a WWE Live event. Thus, for those of you not super familiar with wrestling jargon, a live event means one that is not taped for television or pay-per-view. Sometimes also referred to as a house show. AJ Styles would only hold the belt for 16 days, though, before losing it back to Kevin Owens at the Battleground pay-per-view. But a few days later, AJ Styles won it back at SmackDown. Good times. Holding it this time for 75 days. Before Baron Corbin won it at Hell in a Cell on October 8th, 2017. He got 70 days before Dolph Ziggler won it back for 9 days. Before it was vacated by General Manager Daniel Bryan. Who ruled that Dolph, Digg Dolph Ziggler vacated the title after he left the belt in the ring. On the December... 19th episode of SmackDown. This was part of a greater angle where Dolph Ziggler was becoming quite uh, discontent with his WWE career. Bobby Roode would win it in, on January 16th on SmackDown, defeating Jinder Mahal in a tournament final to win the vacant title belt. On March 11th's Fastlane pay-per-view, Randy Orton would win the title. 28 days later, Jinder Mahal would win it in a fatal four-way match, also involving Bobby Roode and Rusev, at WrestleMania 34 from New Orleans, Louisiana. We would then have another draft shape, roster shakeup, and Jinder Mahal would bring the title to the Raw brand for eight days before Jeff Hardy won it taking the brand back taking the belt back to SmackDown with him holding it for three months before Shinsuke Nakamura won it at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view on July 15th holding it for 156 days before our buddy Rusev wins it on the December 18th episode of SmackDown Getting another 40 days with the belt before Shinsuke Nakamura gains it back at the Royal Rumble kickoff show. However, a few days later at SmackDown, R-Truth would win it. 35 days later, he would lose it to Samoa Joe on the March 5th episode of SmackDown in a fatal four-way match, also involving Andrade and Rey Mysterio. The title belt becomes exclusive to the Raw brand at this point. where Rey Mysterio would win it at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view in May. Holding it for 15 days before relinquishing the title back to Joe due to Mysterio suffering a legitimate shoulder injury and the controversial way in which he won the title at Money in the Bank, i.e. Joe's left shoulder was not down when the referee counted the pin. So that means Joe got a second reign. This one lasting 20 days before Ricochet wins it at the Stomping Grounds pay-per-view for three weeks before AJ Styles wins it back at Extreme Rules for his third reign on July 14th. Managing 134 days before Rey Mysterio wins it back. Holding it for a month before Andrade wins it at another WWE Live event on December 26, 2019. Andrade would hold it for 151 days before losing it to Apollo Crews on the May 25th episode of Raw from Orlando, Florida, getting 97 days. But Bobby Lashley would gain his second title reign at the Payback pay-per-view, also in Orlando, Florida, being a 175-day champion four at the Elimination Chamber in a triple threat match also involving John Morrison 
Matt Riddle wins it by pinning the aforementioned John Morrison. 49 days later, Sheamus kicks Matt Riddle out of midair to win the title at WrestleMania 37, night two from Tampa, Florida. 132 days later, Damian Priest wins it at the August 21st, 2021 SummerSlam. 191 days of Damian Priest dominance before on an episode of Raw, Finn Balor wins it for 49 days before Austin Theory wins it on the April 18th Raw, holding it for 75 days before losing it to Bobby Lashley at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Who held it for exactly 100 days before Seth freaking Rollins won it most recently on October 10th, 2022, making him the active and current champion. So let's go ahead and get our numbers in. The longest reigning champion of the WWE era is MVP, whose two reigns equal 419 days. The longest single reign of the WWE era is Dean Ambrose's 351-day reign. Of course, for those of you uh, trivia heads, Dean Ambrose is currently known as John Moxley as a member of AEW. And that means the shortest single reign in WWE era was Edge's six-day reign before the title was deactivated as the Invasion pay-per-view or Invasion angle ended at Survivor Series pay-per-view that we mentioned. Discounting that due to the title being deactivated, again, you know, the shortest single reign would be Jinder Mahal's reign of eight days. And that is your WWE era of the U.S. Championship. Now, as I said, this is an active title currently held by Seth Rollins. So, there could be a lot more history to it. Still, we'll have to give it a few years before we do a follow-up video discussing what has happened to the title since. But no matter what, it is definitely a title held by many proud champions who have gone on to do a lot of other things in WWE, including also being Intercontinental Champions, World Champions, Tag Team Champions. The title is in many ways both a stepping stone title or for previous World Champions, a good title to help rebuild themselves back to that main event scene. Check it out. Pretty much any WWE pay-per-view since 2001, or really 2003 if you want to get into the, well, it's still WCW, but booked by WWE era. But any pretty much any pay-per-view since 2003 is going to feature a United States title defense. So it is good quick viewing. And there really wasn't a lot of weak champions. There was some short champions, but it's not like the title was ever put on somebody just as a lark or a joke. I mean, you could kind of say the Bret Hart thing because due to the no DQ, no count out, he didn't beat Miz, Miz 100% by himself, but that was more of a respect thing. It was during that era where Bret had just repaired his relationship with the WWE. So it was kind of a apology, you know, career lifelong. Hey, we'll give you one more title run you know, one more notch on your Hall of Fame record thing. So I don't really count that necessarily as a joke reign, just an intentionally short booked reign. Still, I'm probably going to take a break from discussing uh, championship belts for a while because I've pretty much run through all the major ones. Uh, there's a lot of regional territory titles from the old NWA days. Uh, we could get into some stuff from TNA. You know, their X Division was pretty impressive for a while and was the biggest thing carrying the brand. But 
we're going to take a hiatus for a couple of months at least to get into some other topics, give some time to other areas of fandom entertainment. Hope you enjoyed this look, this entire series really, that I've been running for quite a while now, and this look into the United States Championships WWF era history specifically. Uh, until then, whenever we discuss professional wrestling again, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. And if you want to check out other topics, we have a wonderful archive. And of course, we are here every Friday for the ramblings. And we do bounce around our topics. Still, um, as we finish up 2022, we got a little bit of leftover business in 2023. But that'll probably wrap up in January, so we'll get going with probably some new ongoing series stuff, which will be exciting. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click that notification bell so you'll get your alerts when new episodes drop. In case, like me, you occasionally forget what day of the week it is and go, I forgot it was Friday. New rambling. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and enjoy yourself.